Hey, B9. This is uh, your Gathering Blue uh, video presentation. I'm going to go through all 23 chapters. I think we can give that a, give that a, a go here um, and see how long that goes. Um, so what I've done is I've, uh, this is the whole PowerPoint uh, summary of the novel, and I'll just provide some commentary as we go. And you can either um, fast forward, pause, whatever you need to do. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, don't forget to uh, uh, transfer that information over to your binders. And then uh, show me that you have uh, fully understood what's going on in the novel. And then submit it when you're done. All right. And don't forget your projects as well. Uh, that they're due on the uh, before the 24th. Okay, so let's share the screen here and let's bring this up. Okay, so let's get to work. So uh, this is book two of the Giver series. And um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other uh, video off um uh because i was done in a word document so i'm gonna just put, have everything on a powerpoint so just to recap uh chapter one uh uh kira's mother katrina has been dead for four days it's it's uh um common for the uh surviving member to uh spend four days in the field um to it's called the field of leaving actually and uh there would be a four-day period where the body would be watched over uh before it's left behind um lowry mentions that the infants were not given a four-day period as it was believed that their spirit drift away immediately after uh their passing um at the end of the four days cure had no home uh, everything of hers was burned uh, due to the sickness uh, that took Katrina. So it was common in the village to uh, burn everything if there was an illness involved. Um, fear is a dominant factor in this village. Um, as a result they, of, of the fear that they had, um, they made shelters, found food, grew things, weapons were made, and stored for the same reason, for the possibility of the fear that it would uh, so be, be uh, something might happen or they might lose a member of the family or uh, they might have a bad year with, with crops or or whatever the case. So they're always living in fear. Um, and then, of course, the fear of the cold, sickness, hunger, and then the, there's the fear of these beasts, which is a common theme throughout the novel. Um, now she's trying to figure out what to do next where is she going to go where is she going to live and uh her father is no longer with her uh her father died um when she was young and um kira has a twisted leg too so she uh th that's hindering her ability to be a productive member of uh her society there uh but her mom fought to keep her alive and uh so kira was allowed to earn her se second syllable um, each per person is uh, identified by syllables. Uh, if you have one syllable, you are just a, just a tyke, as uh, um, the book refers to the younger children as tykes. And then when you hit a different stage in your development, you earn a, s a second syllable. Uh, when you are an adult, you earn your third syllable. And if you do manage to live a very long time, then you earn your fourth syllable. And uh, so her original name was Kier. And her father, was Christopher, was taken by the beasts uh, during a hunt. And uh, so it's just her and her mother for many years. Uh, Kira worked in the weaving shed, uh, just like her mother. Um, and um, so she learned the skill of we weaving and she, she, she had a real knack for it. Um, her friend Matt was warning her that the draggers may take her to the field at any time uh, because of her, her deformed leg. Um, and there was one person that wanted her out of the community, and that was Vandera. And we'll learn more about her later. So in Chapter 2, uh, Kira to play Dom, 
uh, that she didn't know about Vandera's Dara, desire to have Kira banished. Um, and then Vandera, she wanted um, what Kira had. Uh, she's very jealous. And so she declares that um, uh, she will claim everything that Kira had. And uh, the other members of the village are afraid of her because she is not a nice person. And um, so Kira was prepared to throw a rock um, at Kira and then uh, claim what, what was left. Um, but uh, she, uh, Kira reminded, her, uh, reminded Bandera that if there is, if there is a conflict with her, she has to take it up with the Council of the Guardians. And um, so she dropped the rock and declared that uh, she will take uh, Kira to the council and then have them cast Kira out of the village and then opening the door for Bandera to take the uh, Kira's items for her own. Um, so by the end of the next day, the land of or that uh, Kira had originally lived on and worked from and things like that will be hers. So um, she had to wait till it was time for her, this meeting with the, the council. Um, we do learn a little more about Kira's abilities. She had a very unique uh, skill uh, of seeing colors and, and uh, being, being able to do things without instruction or practice and, and things like that. Now, does that remind you of another character? Well, Jonas uh, from The Giver. And uh, there's that, uh, that scene beyond uh, the ability that he had that the chief elder mentioned in that story. In chapter three, we have a messenger that comes to Kira to report uh, to the Council of the Guardians. Um, there, the whole village is, is broken down homes. Uh, and then you have this beautiful, this one building that is in beautiful shape. It's been there for who knows how long, and it uh, was even there before the ruin. The ruin is the time period where everything went uh, bad for this village, and so uh, uh, the gathering would take place uh, just outside the the, uh, the um, council edifice, as they call it, uh, very similar to the December ceremony as well. Um, the it was rumored that the uh, singer who tells the story of like the history of the village uh, was rumored to uh, have only one job, and that was to sing the song of the village village's history. And uh, so for days and days and days and days and days, uh, he, he would uh, he he would prepare his voice for this eventual performance at the gathering. Um, the song that he would sing would be called the Ruin Song, and this, as I said before, it, the Ruin Song is the history of uh, the village. So it would tell the whole story about the the people there, uh, spanning centuries, and um, uh, there was a lot of uh, um, downs, and then there were some ups, and then there were downs, and and uh, tragedies and things like that. And then there was ups again. And so uh, it, it'll be interesting to know what how this song will be sung. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea that uh, when it was good, it, the, the song would be very uh, enjoyable, I guess, uh, peaceful. And uh, when things weren't that great in history, then, then it would kind of come, come down or it might be even... Um, Tense and and things like that. So we'll see what happens. And the song uh, also was uh, talked about like very specific details. Uh, so it makes you wonder how long the song really is in regards to uh, the if it's if it if it is a, a very descriptive song. Um, but uh, despite all the stuff that's happened, the council edifice remained intact and pristine shape. So, um, there were, uh, uh, Kira's mother was always telling her to take pride in her pain. Um, it, the, the pain makes you stronger. And so if we look at that, it would be, 
resiliency or perseverance when we over, overcome our our pain and our fears uh, through resiliency and perseverance we believe in ourselves we trust ourselves um she Kira knew that she had to prepare for this meet this uh meeting or this trial i guess they, they call it uh so she gets herself cleaned up and uh because she wants to make a good impression in hopes that she can stay in the village and uh so uh and she knows there's 12 men on the council for the guardians so she, there's a lot of people to uh uh sway or persuade um to uh, keep kira in the community now uh she had to present herself uh in a way that there was a procedure and steps to follow. Um, and so she would present herself very reverently. Um, and uh, there's, you had to hold, hold your hands in a reverent position, cup together and uh, fingertips below her chin and things like that. The guardians approved of the procedure and, um, and she waited for the next step. Vandera shows up, she didn't clean herself up at all, uh, made no special preparations. So Kira's hoping that by doing what she did, getting herself cleaned up and all that, uh, that proactive approach will, will be in her favor. And uh, so the chief guardian allows Vandera to speak because she's the one that's uh, accusing Kira of not being uh, pr a productive member of society. And uh, so Vandera makes her case and it, it's uh, a lot of it is uh, generalizing uh and uh kind of kind of i want that kind of like a like she's whining um and she's jealous and, and things like that and but she has the floor and she she presents it and the guardians know it's like uh that uh this is what she's doing um and she's finding any kind of fault with kira uh and pretty soon it, it's almost like she's making up some stuff as well and uh, the main point that Vandera, Vandera did make, that she would not be able to do any of the labor in the village, um, or, and uh, that would hinder the progress of, of uh, the other workers as well. So uh, we found out that uh, uh, her grandfather was still alive and had power. Uh, that was the only re reason why Kira was allowed to remain in the village anyway. So when her mother fought for Kira's uh, uh, remaining in, in the village, uh, the grandfather was still alive. And so there's no way that the council could um, uh, go against that guardian. Um, and uh, so that's why Kira was able to escape that uh, um possible uh, conclusion to her life um so Kira starts to cozy up to the guardians uh that um or sorry this is Vandera still Vandera trying to, trying to cozy up to the guardians uh saying hey you got the power you got more wisdom things like that and then uh after the, all that um the garden said okay you've spoken enough so you're done uh he he says that a two-syllable girl uh was not required to defend herself so there's there's certain status requirements in the, in the village and um so the question is what is it with the emphasis on syllables status is it generational maybe we've got to, we'll find that out as the novel progresses uh kira was able to defend herself but she decided not to and so then a person named jameson comes in too defend Kira and she doesn't know who this person is so um in chapter four we learn more about the village it wasn't like a family unit system like, like in the giver um and it was very normal not to see a lot of people uh during the week um you'd be lucky to see maybe one or two uh regularly and then the rest you'd probably see sporadically uh, Jameson broke down each accusation that Bandera met, uh, made, and there were a lot of them. But uh, and every time the accusation was made, it was just like Kira was getting it all over again. And um, 
So we, uh, it was quite painful for her to hear that again. Um, Jameson did state that Vendera was correct, uh, that uh, it was the way to send uh, a child like, uh, like Kira to the field, but it was, uh, he also said that we, we could make amendments to that rule as well like an exception. So it doesn't need to always be that way. And so then uh, the ex after the accusations were confirmed, uh, especially that her father was taken by the beast, James states that uh, he was there when Kira's father was taken. And that surprised Kira because uh, she didn't remember anything of that, of that, albeit she was very young at the time. Um, James states that her father was a fine hunter uh, and the guardians agreed with that assessment. Uh, Kira asked, was asked a, a second time to, uh, to speak, and she declined um, both times, actually. So why is she not defending herself? That's the, the other question there. So um, Jameson spoke on her behalf and said that she does have uh, something to offer, and this is her weaving she has the unique ability to weave without any instruction or anything like that she just has this way of weaving and creating this beautiful art artwork uh, uh, in uh, fabrics and things like that so uh, then um, she did speak up and said yes she does have that ability um, and and that's an affirmation so she's she believes in herself so jameson asked if uh, uh to uh show her flaw as they refer to it um so the flaw is the inability to walk the twisted leg that she has and she doesn't like that at either either um but uh jameson says it, she is slow like in walking in that but she's very uh competent when it comes to uh working in the weaving shed and um then she was asked a third time to speak a little more, and she didn't. And uh, so then it was break time. So they had some, uh, some food we brought to her, and uh, she meets up with her friend Matt. And uh, Matt uh, says there would be some people uh, in the village to build her a brand new place to uh, live. And she thanks Matt for this. Now, the only clothing she had on her... Um, was a little piece of cloth, like a well. She had, she had her clothing that uh, was provided uh, for the by the village. But uh, uh, there's a piece of clothing that she uses to draw strength from, and it was uh, it was richly embroidered. But um, she didn't have anything that was blue, and. Um, but this cloth, anyways, was was a special token, I guess, uh, to help her uh, get through things. Um, maybe you have a, a special trinket, like a jewelry piece or things like that, that you remember loved ones and, and things like that. Um, the only clothing in the village that had lots of colors in it uh, was a robe that the singer wore on the gathering days. But the only thing that was missing off that robe was color blue. And um, so that's, that's stuck with her for a long time. And uh, again, anytime she, she gets nervous or whatever the case, she, she goes back to her own piece of cloth that uh, um, she's able to draw um, emotions or, or uh, a feeling uh, of knowledge that uh, that, she, that uh, things that she doesn't know, and then it actually happens. So um, we're going to learn more about how that came came about. Uh, at least we hope we do. Um, chapter five: There was a large box uh, placed on the floor behind seats of the guardians, um, and inside the box was the robe. Hmm. So uh, the robe was laid out on the table. Uh, it normally is not seen um, until the gathering, but for this case, uh, it was brought out and uh, it was like evidence, I guess, uh, to support Jameson's uh, 
suggestion that Kira be the, the next weaver um, to take care of the robe and get it all ready for the gathering. And um, so Kira confirms that she's able to do this stuff. And um, she knows how to, to um, make the various different dyes of, of color. And that those colors would last for a long time. If you, um, the problem with blue though, is if you don't take care of it, it, it uh, quickly turns white and they, they uh, fade away. Um, Katrina was taught by a woman named Annabelle, a two syllable person, but then when uh, Annabella, she became Annabella when she became an elder, uh, which was very rare in the, the village. And uh, so a four syllable uh, per, uh, individual was quite surprising for Kira. And I mean, she's still alive. So that's, uh, she'll be able to learn from her. Um, she would prefer to have learned from her mother, but then, sadly, her mother is no longer with her. So um, Vandera wanted to delay the end. Uh, uh, she, or she wanted to put an end to this whole thing and uh, just get to the, the decision-making process. And she was es escorted out. Um, Vandera de de demanded, actually, to know the decision uh, of what was going on. And the guardian says that she has no rights. Um, but she's gonna, they're going to tell her anywhere. Uh, anyways, and uh, just to make sure that Vandera understands what's going on, and, and then she'll leave this alone. So uh, Kira's job is to, to continue her mother's work, and she she will now live within the Council of Evidence, and Vandera can have whatever she wants uh, of Kira's. And it's like... Um, Vendor's like, she's got the stuff now. Uh, she's got Kira's belongings, but that's not enough. Uh, she, she just despises her. Um, so is it jealousy? Mm, guess we'll find out. Um, she says she's going to fail. And usually people who are jealous tends to uh, find any fault with uh, with uh, someone who is able to do things better than than yourself. And, and they're, they'll, they'll go as far as even uh trying to hurt you uh or uh, or de derail you or, or things like that um and, and because their self-confidence is pretty low and so if they're low they're gonna they're, they're gonna take you down with them so how do you how do you pre prevent that from happening or impacting you in a negative way so Kira is now being taken away from that so she knows she doesn't have to deal with having to fight Bandera uh, every single day she's going to I guess we'll call it a, re a reprieve maybe um, and uh, it's going to turn out to be a very good one for Kira um, because uh, what's to come is going to be something that she never dreamed would ever happen to her especially with somebody who has, has a physical uh, uh, challenge uh, such as Kira's um Matt had saved some supplies before everything was burnt down. Uh, so he's he's been a good, a good friend for Kira. And uh, so then she goes to the weaving, weaving shed that she worked every time with her mother and said goodbye to everybody. So uh, now it was time to um, uh, get back to the edifice. And um, uh, Jameson was there waiting for her and presented her new quarters where she was going to live and this place is like five-star hotel uh, and it's just an amazing place she and she had running water uh she had uh tools uh the necessary tools she needed if she wanted something else she just had to ask for it um she even had neighbors that actually were nice uh thomas uh He's the uh, carver. Or he does. He works on the staff that would be held by the singer at the gathering, and he would work on that. And uh, so it 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 was a uh, actually pretty good uh, turn of events for her. And uh, we'll see where it takes her. So uh, she wakes up the next morning. She has breakfast, and people usually in the village are very 
uh, fortunate if they do get any food uh, during the day. Um, Kira and her mother would actually leave the village to get some food um, by the stream. And, uh, but she had access to cooking things and, and, uh, but she doesn't know how to use them because she's never seen it before. And so she asked Thomas for some help. Uh, Kira's new title is called Kira the Threader. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, she introduced herself to Thomas and they're about the same age around there. Um, they both have two syllables as well. So that's what she's basing it on, I guess. And um, there are people that are called the tenders. So they're the ones that will get anything that Kira uh, wants for uh, that will help her with the mending of this rope. And uh, there's no rules to follow, really, um, except for the job she's supposed to assign to do. So um, it's pretty vague, but um, I guess you have one job to do. That's to mend the, the and improve the uh, the robe, and go from there. So, uh, Jameson uh, comes to check in on uh, Kieran, and he will do this throughout the whole novel, just to see what her progress is and and uh, make sure she's still on track and and uh, doing her one job that she's supposed to do. And uh, so she says she needs some help with the dyes, so she goes to uh, see Annabella. Uh, she learns the different colors, that there are multiple different colors and, and different plants that, that are utilized for those dyes. And um, uh, she says, but to use the knowledge of the threading, you must learn to make the making of shading. When to sadden with the iron pot, how to bloom the colors, how to bleed. And uh, so she has to remember all this information because in this uh, society uh, girls are not allowed to read or write so it's it's a lot of it is recall uh, memory so um that's it's a lot to take in there were signs of the color blue but a lot of them had uh, faded to white on this um robe um and uh, they had every other color there and but she still wanted blue um uh, it it uh just it was something that uh uh, brought peace and serenity for her. Um, so she asked Jameson for a color garden, and a color garden would be the different plants that she would utilize to uh, get the colors. And um, then all of a sudden, uh, she hears that Matt is going on a hunt. Now, Matt's just a tyke, and he's a one-syllable uh, person. So he's not ready to hunt yet, uh, but he wants to get that second syllable. He wants to kind of rush rush things, and that would fit his character. And uh, so she hurries out to try to stop this hunt, this, this, uh, hunt uh, or, or Matt taking uh, part in this hunt because Matt's not going to survive it. Um, and only men were allowed to hunt. Very similar to a hunter-gatherer society. Uh, um uh, the men hunted and, and the uh, women would gather. Um, Matt says he has a two-syllable name. His name is Maddie now, but he did not really have that title given to him. Um, Thomas speaks on uh, Kira's behalf. And, uh, of course, they get Matt out of this uh, hunt. And there was there's always talk about a beast or about beast taking people things like that and she feels she's being chased by a beast in the uh in the fields as she was collecting the the resources needed for her uh, colors uh it was difficult for her to maneuver because of her her uh uh physical challenge and um so she makes her way to annabella's place and, and she's calmed uh by annabella and they have some tea and and uh, Annabella says, there aren't any beasts. There aren't any beasts. So the big question is, who, what was chasing her? Okay. Um, and then she starts to ask another question. Maybe her father wasn't killed by a beast. So, uh, if because Annabella's been around for a long time, so she would know a lot. 
Um, in chapter 12, we had a massive storm that was taking place and uh, Kira couldn't even leave the edifice uh, because uh, it was too muddy out. She had to stay indoors. And um, But unfortunately, she needed some of the resources uh, uh, from the uh, color shed. And um, there was not much to do um, during the year be except for uh, for working on his robe, um, and her foot told her focus is supposed to be getting this done, this robe done before uh, the gathering starts, and uh, so in preparation for the gathering, it's just like uh, Jonas pre preparing for the December ceremony. It's, it gets a little uh, apprehensive, uh, you know, uh, whether or not uh, she's going to get this done in time. Uh, Jameson continues to check on uh, Kira and likes what she, uh, he's seeing. So uh, that's a good uh, good sign. Um, and then uh, Jameson says, well, there's a part of the room that needs to be decorated. Now this this part will be uh, decoration of all the different threads and and things like that. Uh, and that will that'll continue to grow over time. So she'll have a, a pretty massive uh, uh, bank of of tools and things like that uh, as, uh, as she continues to uh, grow and and uh, evolve uh, in her new home. Um, so the we get learn uh, more about the robe itself. Uh, um, there was ruin, rebuilding, ruin again, regrowth, uh, and they were depicted or shown uh, in these uh, pictographs on the robe. And, uh, but she wanted calm. She wanted a color of calm and that is blue. And uh, Annabelle says there is blue, but it's blue yonder. It's elsewhere. And yeah. now that, does that sound familiar? And um, so, uh, first of all, what is, uh, she's, she's got to find some somebody who knows what calm is. Um, and she has to find somebody who, can get to yonder uh, to get this one. So more questions, lots of questions being asked in this novel. And then she hears a noise, okay? Uh, actually, it was heard by Thomas. So uh, Jameson brings in a child uh, in, in chapter 13 who can sing beautifully. This is a very young tyke. Uh, her name's Joe, And she's always singing all the time. And she's been brought into the edifice as a new member uh, of this uh, this triad, we'll call it. Uh, you got Thomas, Kira, and now Joe. Okay, um, but what's the significance of that? That's that's a big question here. She's an orphan now because her mom and dad passed away. But now we got more questions. Both parents passed away at the same time. Um, why is that happening? And uh, so. Mother died of sickness, very similar to Katrina. Father uh, sadly took his life uh, um, while watching the body in the field. That's the story that's been told. Um, and Kira was angry that uh, that happened because uh, there was still Joe. And unfortunately and sadly, uh, Joe was now left by herself so uh, Matt couldn't help her in that regard um, orphans uh, usually go to other people in the village but uh, this one uh, can sing so uh, what makes that special we're not we're not too sure about that and uh, Kira says uh, tells Jameson that she's afraid to walk the path because there's beasts and uh, but then she reminds herself that Annabella says there aren't any bees. So what is it true? Was she, you know, are there bees? Are there no bees? What's what's the deal here? Um, and uh, when uh, Jameson hears that Annabella said that there aren't any bees, uh, he uh, said that it was dangerous dangerous for her to say that. So that makes you wonder what that's very cryptic. And makes you wonder what's going on there. Um, and he also warns uh, Kira not to experience what her father did, and that's being killed by the beast. So, um, 
as the day ended, she hears a child sobbing, and that's that's Joe. And I guess she lives um, below Thomas and Kira. In chapter 14, uh, we have Marlena. Uh, it was a person that uh, Kira used to work with, with uh, Katrina. And uh, so Kira starts to do some investigating and ask some questions. And uh, so we learn more about Joe. And um, then all of a sudden, Matt comes storming in and says, don't go visit Annabella because she's not there anymore. The draggers took her away to the field. And so uh, Kira wants to answer on how Annabella died. And uh, she doesn't get any answers. Um, so then she has to revert back to her main uh, uh, inquiry, and that's, you know, who's Joe? What makes her special? Things like that. And then Jameson comes along and says, uh, pass on sympathies, uh, and told her about the death of Annabella. Um, in chapter 15, we have dying place being set up uh, for her, a uh, place where she can get take the plants and and uh, boil them and, and then get your, your, your very specific colors for uh, the, uh, the robe that she's working on. And uh, it was between the ed ed edifice and the woods. Okay. So she has to go back and forth and that, but she still, go she still goes back to uh, the, the question of what happened to Annabella. And uh, so Jan Jameson says that she passed away in her sleep. Well, there's no one else. else. Uh, she's she, Kira has to take Jameson at his word because uh, so far that's the only in, in information that she was able to get. So she she has to, uh, I guess, be satisfied with that uh, um, that response. Um, Kira had asked if she can be the watcher for Annabella in the four day period, but uh, Jameson said no. Uh, that would set her back quite a bit in in her progress with the the robe, and uh, so then there's more questions like who found Annabella, uh, how they know when to check in on her, uh, things like that, um, and then uh, the the story switches over to Thomas. Uh, and he talks about how he was brought it brought to the edifice. Um, he was kind of like Matt, very mischievous. Uh, and even in his early years, he got to the point he wanted to investigate. And so he had created a key that allowed him access to pretty much every room in, in the edifice. So Kira and Thomas decided to check out and investigate the edifice, see, what, see where it is, and maybe find out where this uh, voice is coming from. Um, Kira hadn't seen Matt all day in Chapter 16. Um and uh, Kira instructs Thomas to take a special scrap of wood with him, um, and Kira would take her cloth. And she doesn't know why yet, why that they uh, should have those items, but uh, I guess they'll figure it out when when the time comes. And um, she is making noise with her the stick that she's leaning like it's a crutch that she has, so at least she can walk a little bit better. Um, and Thomas uh, puts some cloth around their stick to to muffle the sound. And uh, so uh, they open the door and they find Joe. And Joe is scared at first. She's just a little tyke. Um, she wants her mother, but Kira can't bring her mother to her or even tell her what's what happened to her mother. Um, so Kira kind of kind of becomes her uh, surrogate mother, I guess, so to speak, calms her, soothes her, and uh, just brings peace to her. And uh, then Joe, Joe uh, states the reason why she's there. And, and they, said they keep telling her that she wants, or she has to learn these songs. Um, and she'd rather sing her own songs, but she, she's being told she, they had, she has to sing specific songs, and, and that's making her mad. Um, but she does it anyways. Uh, Kira and Thomas say they enjoy her singing. She has a beautiful voice. Um, and uh, so they, 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 they devise a plan where they can, uh, they can maybe have Joe climb a, a closet and she could tap the roof. 
uh, and just let her know that uh, she she needs company or or things like that, but not to tell anybody about it. So, um, so uh, we find out that the we have this triad. This uh, uh, we have the staff maker, the robe maker, and the song maker, and they all have a purpose uh, leading up to this gathering. And what that is like specifically, we don't know yet. Uh, they have value, and they don't understand what that value is. And um, Kara was lo losing the, thread of, the joy of threading that she once had because she worked with her mother, and then there was the uh, time with Annabella and things like that. Now it's just her. And uh, so uh, then she realizes that she's working on something that's not hers, whereas she had more, a lot more fun doing it when it was for her. Um, and uh, she was able to create whatever she wanted. So why is that Why is that a difference? Or what, what makes that a difference? Um, and then she, then she goes back to what Joe said. She wants to sing her own songs. Um, but that she's being forced to sing a specific or certain songs um, by the council. So the, bit, the other question is, does Thomas uh, feel the same way about the staff? Like, is he, is he able to make his own items aside from this key that he made uh to gain access to all the doors which is actually a pretty cool uh thing to do um matt has still not been seen uh in chapter 17 and uh so Kira decides to go out to the fen the fen is, is a place where uh she can pick up some more uh plants and stuff like that um and we find out uh, that Matt it lives in that area and that his life is not uh, all uh, roses and cream. Uh, that, that wasn't a good living conditions, I guess, so to speak. And uh, But then we find out that Matt has gone to the blue yonder. Okay. Question is, where is that? We don't know. Chapter 18, uh, the day of the gathering is approaching. Um, everyone's getting ready for this big event. And um, so uh, Th Thomas is uh, polishing the singer's staff again. Matt's not been seen again. Uh, Joe's practicing those songs. Kira's doing the fine uh, tuning on the, on the robe. And Jameson likes what he sees. Okay. And... Uh, Jameson says they've been waiting for Kira to be to come. Now, why is that? Like, why are you? Why have you been waiting for me to come do this robe? Uh, so again, more questions. In chapter nineteen, the staff and the robe were taken away, and uh, Matt's still missing, and uh, Kira is, is is experiencing loss, and she's uh, uh, fearing the worst. The council of the gardens were. Uh, seated uh, on a platform and uh, Thomas and Kira and Joe were allowed to, to sit with them as well and um, Kira didn't like to be put on display uh, for this but she had no choice uh, the gathering begins uh, they they start with this worship worshiping of an object it's a little cross construction of wood and then Thomas was introduced as the carver of the future Kira was the robe that are uh, threader the designer of the future and joe was this first singer of the future and then one day she will wear the robe um and then of course we get the description of robe in each of the different songs that were sung and it's called the song the ruined song um and it continued for several hours like this is a long song um but it's a detailed song because it it talks about for the beginning of time and all the different events that, uh, that have impacted this village and uh, the ups the downs and uh, the neutral times and, and things like that and then uh, you could tell when things were good in the history uh, when it was quiet uh, certain colors were brought out they, they, this the singer would raise the robe in the sections uh, that he was singing at that time, and then they moved to another section on the robe and stuff like that. Uh, the melodic and soothing sections had green in it. 
Uh, the serene sections had a whole, whole bu bunch of different colors in it uh, of harvests and celebrations and, and things like that. While this is going on, Kira sees Matt and uh, it's like she wants to talk to him right away, but she can't because uh, th this presentation is still going on. And uh, so the serenity of the song at that point, uh, very serene and things like that. And then, of course, seeing Matt, it was just, whoa, finally, the things are, are, are getting back to normal. Uh, but then she blinks, he's gone. Okay, so now we get into uh, lunch break, and then she sees Matt again, and um, Matt has something for her, and it is a cloth that is the color blue. Now, where did he get that? Where did he get that from? And it was very deep, uh, very deep blue, and uh, so she wanted to know a lot. There was a lot more questions she had, and... Um, Matt said that he got it from uh, a person and uh, the, he met a lot of people. They were broken people, uh, lots of food, very quiet, uh, nice people, caring people. Um, but uh, Kira wanted to l learn more about broken. When, like, what did, he, what did he mean by that? And um, so then Kira goes back to the, the quote that her mother shared, pain makes you strong but she didn't say anything about how pain can make you quiet in nights. So um, she's trying to figure that one out. Uh, um, like what, what does Matt mean? Uh, quiet and nice and broken. So uh, Matt asked if uh, Kira liked the blue uh, uh, cloth and she said she did. She loved it. Um, they had to return back to the gathering and hear the second part of, of the song. And it was, and he was uh, both Thomas and Kira was hearing this metal sound dragging on the on the stage, and nobody else heard it, but they did. And um, then she realized what the sound was. And and when you read chapter twenty, it's like, what was the sound? Well, you got to move to chapter twenty one. So uh, the gatherings ended, and. Uh, the this metallic sound kind of left her a bit. Um, Matt says, yeah, "I've got here's your second gift." So uh, they they get back to Kira's room, and inside is the stranger, scarred, blinded, um, and also has a uh, twisted leg. Um, he had brought a plant. It's a uh, it's a woad plant. And uh, that that plant is the the, the key to getting blue. And uh, she, she's like, she, I think I know this person. I think I know this person. And it happened to be Christopher, her father. Like when I when I when I read that part, it's like, oh, ma, okay, her father, he's alive. And uh, so, father and daughter are reunited in this in this uh um chapter in uh, 22 uh we have uh we find out that there aren't any beasts like like animal beasts per se uh the beasts are the men the ones who are jealous the one who uh the ones who will do anything at any at all costs to get what they want um and even killing for it and um, so on the day of the hunt, um, everybody knew that uh, Christopher was a, a skilled hunter. Um, and despite his uh, uh, twisted leg, he was able to do, to do a lot. And he was being considered for a position uh, as a guardian uh, on the council there. And so uh, a lot of people were jealous that uh, somebody with a twisted leg was being uh given the opportunity to become a powerful individual. And uh, so there was a lot of infighting going on. And uh, so um, uh, there, there were times where, uh, and they, ref they referred to these men as they. And um, so uh, they want to take care away. Mother fought, said no. Um, and 
Uh, she also fought for her her husband as well, and uh, she won. And we we got to go back to to the fact that we had a grandfather in power at that time too. So there was a lot of protection uh, for uh, that family. And um, the the beast that was chasing Kira, her father, albeit, uh, uh, and we're not sure how that played out, whether uh, uh, Matt had already made arrangements uh, and brought him to a certain point or whatever. And uh, um, uh, like she could have met her father sooner or whatever, but uh, you know, there was a lot of fear in that village. So she didn't get, it, she didn't take the time, I guess, uh, to fully find out uh who or what this beast was and um the same thing had happened to christopher uh somebody had been stalking him and uh, um so then maybe kira's thinking maybe the person that was stalking her in the forest was somebody else as well and um in christopher's case he was attacked and left for dead so um, he woke in the field and uh, uh, thinking the draggers took him out there, he was actually collected by uh, some people and um, he couldn't see him because he was blinded and uh, he was cleaned up, cared for and all that. And he lived his life with them. Uh, those people are his family now. Um, but when Matt came, um, it was he felt it was necessary to, to be reunited with his daughter. And uh, so Christopher wants to go back to that uh, life, and he wants uh, Kira to go with him. But Kira is saying, hey, I got all this. You could stay here with me. And Christopher says, no, I can't, because there's a person that is still there that wants him dead, and that's Jameson. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So in chapter 23, last chapter, um, we find out uh, Kara has to get ready for the next gathering and um, lots of review and reassessment and contemplation and, and things like that. Uh, what is she going to do? Is she going to stay here? Is she going to join her father? Um, lots of lot, and more questions. Okay. Uh, this seems to be a book about a lot of questions and uh, secrets and and things like that. So who to trust? Is there truth to any of these uh, theories that she has? Um, we'll never know. Uh, just like in the first book in The Giver, lots of questions at the end. Does, does Jonas really make it uh, to the cabin and things like that? Uh, will Kira ever find out the real truth of what's going on? Um, and then she, all of a sudden there was like a light bulb goes off and she remembers what she saw that uh, she heard that metallic sound uh, again in her head and she, and, and it, it brought back what she saw and she found out that the singer's uh, legs were deformed. Uh, they were chained uh, and uh, uh, they were not in good shape at all. And the the clanging of the chains uh, is what she heard on stage, but nobody else would hear it because uh, they weren't like that close. And uh, so the guardians found a way to harness the strengths of others. And the only way that they, they could do that was to take it and make it their own. Okay. So uh, her father says Matt will be a uh, a go between, I guess, and uh, so they'll stay in touch. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the the plant that uh, her father brought will give her the color blue, will allow her to continue her uh, her um, art, and uh, as, as a result, she finally realizes that she has a new beginning to live. She has something to look forward to, visit with her father, and at the same time live in the, um, in this new, in the place of comfort that she has, uh, and maybe tell a different story 
that's the other final question tell a different story on that robe so um it'd be interesting to see what the third book messenger uh whether that continues the story or not i'm not sure uh and then of course the last book of the uh um uh the, the series sun so that's the gathering and uh so if you have any questions please let me know uh, but that's chapters 1 to 23 and if you've missed any chapters please get that done and submit it as soon as possible okay so there you go we'll talk to you later take care be safe